Hello. In this video, we are going to walk through creating a family contact in New Org. When you log on to the system, you will come to the main home tab. From here, I recommend going to the contacts tab and first searching for the family to be sure not to create duplication. I've chosen to enter the Craft family and I've checked the system and I don't see Becca so I can begin adding the family. To start, you will go to the full intake form to the left. Clicking on this intake form will open another browser with just some basic information to get started. For contact code, I recommend using mom or primary caregivers initials. Put in the primary caregiver's name. This is not the child. This is the primary caregiver, which is usually mom or another adult. Here I have Becca Craft, whose mother, and any information we might know about Becca. We do need it does require you to choose a group. The group we will all be choosing is Baby Talk. Once you click Save, your contact further information for your contact will open. Here we see my contact code that the contact is assigned to me for now. If you're entering for another caseworker, you're able to change this from the dropdown and that our contact is active. We can continue to add basic information for Becca, including address, ethnicity, marital status, whether or not Becca is pregnant, and I am going to enter a prenatal child for this family, so I will put yes there in some base, other basic fields. Keep in mind these fields that say child only are not entered at this time. Those will be entered when we put the children in the system. Once you have mom's information, you can click next to this little plus sign next to information. It's going to further open additional information for the family. This is where you will choose your family designation of need. And for PI programs, we know that this is indicated. You will also choose your intended intensity of services. I believe that is usually a biweekly. If it's different for your organization, you can choose so. And then fill in any other information here. One last field that you're able to fill out is the wait list and this is where you would put any of those families who may or may not be on a wait list. From here I can click save and once this information is saved we have created our primary contact in the system. You will know this because from the contact view on, underneath the main contacts tab we see mom or Becca. Please note that in the system the large rectangular box is where the primary contact lives, so this should never be where a child's information is. Next, we will begin to add the children. It's important to note that when adding a child, you will always do so by clicking New Contact from the Main Contacts view. Never click Attach an Existing Contact. I'm going to go ahead and enter our first child by clicking New Contact. Similar to when we entered Mom or Primary Contact, I see who the contact is assigned to and the status of that contact. My first contact is going to be Hannah Craft. This contact role is Child, and then now you can fill out any of the information you know. No need to put in another address, it will use the default of Mom unless the child does live at a different address. I do know this child's gender and birth date. And if there were any of these child only fields to fill in, now would be the time. For training purposes, I'm just going to fill in the bare minimum. We will click save. And once the contact is saved, you now see Hannah Craft underneath Becca Craft in the main contacts tab. To enter another contact, we will come to the right over here and click on New Contact. Remember to never click Attach an Existing Contact. This tab would attach a family underneath the Craft family. It's used to attach two separate primary contacts. 
so we always use the new contact button to create a child. Here I am going to enter my prenatal. So we do not know the name of the child yet. We'll put baby craft. We'll go ahead and role of child and we don't have a gender or a birth date. So we can click save and by simply clicking save and entering those few fields we have created this contact. It's important to note that once the baby is born or prenatal child is born, you will not create another contact. You will simply edit the contact that you've already created and fill in the name and other information you now know. I will go ahead and also put dad. on this contact and I'm just gonna fill in just the basics. Now we have a full view of our family which includes mom or primary caregiver, the prenatal baby, older sibling, and dad. Let's go ahead and enter one more child and we'll say that this child is also enrolled in the program so that this family has two children enrolled. So what I am seeing here is mom, prenatal, an older sibling who will not be enrolled in the program, an older brother who is enrolled in the program, and dad. Our next step is to create subcontact inf information for children enrolled in the program. For that, we will click on the subcontact info tab to create new subcontact information, which these are those additional PI information fields for children enrolled in your program. You will only create this for enrolled children. So that means when you open it, mom is automatically chosen, but we know Hannah is not in the program. We know baby is. And so we will choose baby craft. And then for subcontact status, it's important you choose active here as well. And any of those additional fields that you do know can be filled in. And by clicking save, your subcontact info record is created. So we will go ahead and create one of these for Jarrett as well. Now, once your child, once a child has aged out of the program, but the family is still active because maybe a younger sister or brother is being served, you would want to go into the subcontact info tab and update the subcontact status to be inactive. This will allow for the older sibling to be included on personal encounter visits, but not be pulled in numbers when you're pulling child PI reporting. Okay, next I like to just click on all of these tabs to so that you can be familiar with where the information from the intake form goes. On the custom fields tab, this is where that information around designation of need and intended int intensity of services lives. You'll remember we filled out this information from our face sheet or full intake form. If you ever wanted to go back to the face sheet or full intake form, you could click that up here and see all of that information that you first put in when creating the contact. Next is the Forms and Surveys tab. This is where you will enter the family interview form for children enrolled in the program. Each child enrolled will need its own family interview form. So we will begin by selecting baby and choosing new form or survey. You may not fill in this form completely, but go ahead and create it. When you open a form, you'll want to click auto save. And this is a longer form, so that auto save is pretty important. And then you can browse through the different pages of the form. Once created, click save changes. From this screen, 
we know that our form is complete. We can either return to the form, print the form, or X out of the browser and X out of the form. Here, we will see the form pop up for baby. And it may not have popped up because I actually didn't even fill in a question. So we're going to test that out by selecting our other child, Jarrett. We're going to click New Form for Jarrett's family interview form. We'll want to do Auto Save to see if our saving theory works. Here I'm going to fill in the first three questions and click Save. Here we know that our form has been completed. And I am going to hit refresh to see if that brings up. And now you see both of my forms. Besides a family interview form, the only other form that is not tied to an event, meaning most of our forms in New Org will come up when you're entering events. There's only these two forms, family interview and income verification, that are standalone forms and attached directly to the contact. Once you have your interview form, you have basically completed entering your family. I will just go ahead and walk through the rest of these tabs for visuals. The notes tab, this allows you to put any notes that you or your coworkers would want to see regarding this family. Mail, if, if you have an email entered for your contacts, your, you'll see email history and any emails you're wanting to send stored there if you choose to use that feature in Newark. And then files, where we can download any documents that you would like attached to this family. So to download a document, you will click Upload New File. You'll see this screen, please select Files to Upload. Files to Upload, I'm just going to pick one from my desktop. You can choose to upload as many as you want. And then you will have to pick type and class. So I'm going to say birth certificates, maybe for the children, and then save. And now you can see that you have a document uploaded for this family. If you chose to edit or delete it, you can choose to do so. And now, if I were to search for Becca Craft, I will see this family on our system. I can choose to go in by the code or the name. We'll open her up. If you had any information maybe that was missing and you'd like to go ahead and add it or update it, you could click Modify on your primary, which will open up Mom. Go ahead and enter the information you would like to enter and choose save. If you needed to update a subcontact or an additional contact, which is usually child, so say Babycraft was born, you could go into edit. And name your baby. And then once that is updated, you can see the change reflected on the system. And that covers creating a family in New Org. Now you are ready to begin entering events.